Hello everyone, my name is Savannah Game, and for this year's History Day Taking a Stand, I chose to do Margaret Fuller. Margaret Fuller was born on May 23, 1810. She was raised in Cambridge, Massachusetts. When Margaret was young, she was very delicate and soft. No one thought she could do much in life. Her father, Timothy Fuller, was a prominent Massachusetts lawyer politician. He educated Margaret so fully, so she did have some background. As she grew up, she became more strong and confident, giving her the strength to be the first woman to do great things. Margaret was best known for being an American journalist, critic, and women's right advocate. But really, she was so much more. She became the first American female book reviewer in journalism. Some of her goals were editing for the transcendentalist journal, journal known as The Dial. She also wrote The Woman in the 19th Century in 1845. This was considered the first major feminist work in the United States. Margaret was very educated and wise. When her father died in 1835, Fuller taught to help support her family. This was known as the Conversation Club. This began in 1839. It then ended once Fuller left to England in 1844 in hopes of new things. The reason she started the Conversation Club was to encourage women to view themselves as human beings rather than weak females. And so it did. Fuller also wrote essays. One of her best essays, The Great Lawsuit, Man vs. Man, Woman vs. Woman, was published in 1845. This was a great accomplishment for Fuller. This essay was made to challenge the gender roles demanded by American society. When Fuller was in England, she worked as a journalist and literary editor and critic. Margaret Fuller's brilliance extended past her works, although activism did not. However, her beliefs were strong and she represented them well through word. Here are a few of her quotes. This one states, If you have knowledge, let others light their candles in it, by Margaret Fuller. Another one states, When people keep telling you that you can't do a thing, you kind of like to try it, by Margaret Fuller. Another one states, Very early I knew that the only object in life was to grow, by Margaret Fuller. Lastly, um, man tells his aspiration in his God, but in his demon, he shows his death of experience by Margaret Fuller. These were just some of Margaret's great quotes. Margaret lived by what she thought was right. Margaret was very well loved. When she was in Italy in 1847, Margaret met a man by the name of Giovanni Angelo. They became lovers and had a son in 1848. Then they fled to Florence in 1849. Sadly, before she can see much of her work, her and her family sailed for the United States, but they died in a shipwreck in Island, New York. Their bodies were never found. Her body was lost along with all of her brilliance. They made a memorial for her, and her family grieved after her death. Some of her work was actually still published. She was treated unfairly during her time period, but that never stopped her. She was truly indeed a hero. She was just a woman, but she helped start a new beginning that changed the world with just her mind and a pen. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton stated, She possessed more influence on the thought of American women than any woman previous to her time. Elizabeth Sherman also stated, only her presence can give you the meaning of the name Margaret Fuller. In these next video clips, you will see a discussion with Lori James on the life and times of Margaret Fuller and her contributions to the women's movement in the 19th century. Also, sadly, you will hear about the death of Margaret and her family. don't know who Margaret Fuller is because she's really been left out of history. But we need to remember her because... She laid the groundwork for the women's rights movement here in the United States. Really? Absolutely. With her book, Woman in the 19th Century. It was the first book on women's equality. So she laid the groundwork for what the feminists, uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and the Susan B. Anthony, uh, did later on with the vote. When they do, do we know that they read that book? That, that they were aware of Oh, that I'm book? sure they did. I, uh, I don't know for sure that they did, but I, I, everyone read it. Mm -hmm. It was very controversial at the time. Now, we're talking about 1845, 
And uh, that when that book was brought out and everyone in the United States and read her book, she it, it launched her as a world celebrity. As a matter of fact, she was world famous after that book. Everyone in the English-speaking world read Margaret Fuller's world, words, not only in, in, her, in, in her book, but in the, uh, on the front pages of the New York Tribune, Daily Tribune, Horace Greeley's paper. And she was, uh, she was a the writer. first woman, yes, she was a writer, mainly, yes, largely. For first woman journalist on Horace Greeley's New York Tribune. Yes, Tribune. yes, 1845, uh, she started work in, uh, at the end of 1845 on, the, on uh, Horace Greeley's paper, newspaper. So that went into Europe. Everyone, she became um, a star, a famous woman at that time. People considered her one of the most brilliant women in America. But not only that, let me go through the firsts. Do you want, do you want to know why we should remember her? Yes. Well, first of all, she was the first woman to write a book on equality for women. She was the first war, America's first war correspondent. Can you imagine that? The first one, um, and she went to Europe. Uh, uh, Horace Greeley and sent war dispatches home from Italy uh, in 1848 and 9. So she became a war and, and correspondent. What war was that? That was the Italian Revolution of 1848 and She nine. was the first um, woman <clears throat> editor of the Dial magazine, and that was the voice of the transcendentalists. Uh, and the dial of the transcendentalists were in the Boston it. area, the prominent women. And we would call them rap sessions today. They were educational sessions. The women were not allowed to go to college in that, at that time. So Margaret Fuller wanted to help women uh, become educated, so to speak, a higher education. So she started conversations. And the- uh, Sort with, of consciousness raising. They were consciousness raising, they were, yes. And, uh, and as I say, they were uh, rap sessions, uh, educational consciousness read, uh, to, to make women respect themselves, to make them have confidence in, in the ability to speak. Where did her, her confidence come from? Okay, I, I, we have to and go where back. where did her education yeah, What happened, of course, she was, she was uh, the revolution ended. They flew to Florence, and Margaret Fuller began to write a book about the Italian Revolution. They didn't have any money, so they were going to return to the United States where she would publish the book. So they set sail, and hitting the, the She was shore, about 40 at the she time? She was 40, right, mm -hmm. and the baby was two. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, um, the... Uh, the, the boat, the ship hit uh, gale winds off the shores of Fire Island, July 19th. That's New York. New York. And um, all three of them drowned. Yes, a tragic end. Terribly tragic. And, and it sent shockwaves through America at the time. Remember, Margaret Fuller is famous at this time. Yes, it, it, was, it was just totally a, tra a tragic, terrible. So, so she was in the prime... Oh, yes, life. she was in the prime of and, her and life. And she had a baby. And she had a baby, and they were returning to America. Her mother was still alive, and her brother, she had her mother and her brothers there, and they were expecting her, and um, they never made it. And other, other people on the ship drowned also. So it's a, so it is very sad. We, we, so much could have happened. Um, um, I mean, if she, if she had, um, I think we would have gotten the boat f faster if Margaret had lived and returned to the United States. You know, this is and this is why I believe Margaret Fuller did take a stand in American history. All her great contributions changed America forever. Thank you.